Hi, we're going to build a model of this truss using SolidWorks. This truss comes from MC300 Lesson 12. So if you take a look in your study guide, you'll see this same sketch that you see shown here. Also, if you look on Blackboard, you'll see the solution for this truss, as we see here. So what we're going to do is build this truss in SolidWorks, and then we're going to compare the answer that we got down here for these three members, J, E, J, F, and G, F. So if you want to note these internal forces, we'll come back to the solution at the end and, and compare. So we're going to build this model, or this truss, sorry, in SolidWorks. We're going to start by creating a new part. Now I'm working in SolidWorks 2014. It's very similar to 2016 with a few minor exceptions that I'll mention as we go. So before we actually create the, the the model, we need to make sure that we've got the Weldments tab and the Simulation tab showing. Right click on any of the tabs if you don't see Weldments and Simulations, and you should see this list of, of uh, possible tabs show up. Make sure that Weldments and Simulation are selected. All right. So Weldments are based on sketches, so we're going to start by creating a sketch on the front plane, and we're going to just start drawing lines. We're going to draw the general shape of this truss. Now it's important to note that even though some of these truss members look like they could be modeled as a single line, SolidWorks needs us to, to create them as individual pieces. And so that's what we're going to do here. So just click along and get the general shape of the truss. We don't need to worry too much about having it perfect at this time but we do need to have the general shape correct. Now it looks like something funky went on here, so let's select that member that's not supposed to be sticking out there, and there he's gone. Hit the delete key, and that truss does not look quite right. So we need to do a few more things to, to tighten it up. So first thing first, we're going to make sure that all four of these bottom members, I'm just holding the shift key as I click all four of those, are equal in length. I also want to make sure that this, these two diagonal members are collinear, and in fact they were automatically defined as collinear just because I was using some of SolidWorks' nice features. But these two are not collinear, so let's select those two and click collinear, and you'll see that it brings those in line. Now we also want to align these two joints with the midpoint of this top segment. Do the same thing on this side of the truss. So if you right click on this top bar, select midpoint, hold down the shift key and click these other two joints and we want to align those vertically. Do the same thing on this side, select the midpoint in the top, hold down the shift key and click on these two and vertically align. Now as I'm working I'm noticing, looks like I've got another one of these <laughs> random pieces sticking out here. So let's just select that and delete that piece as well. I'm not sure the mouse was getting a little sticky. All right, now it's time to dimension this. So let's use the Smart Dimension tool, and each of these bays is 1.5 meters. And because I had defined these four pieces as equal, they're automatically changing to be the uh, 1.5 meters. Now this dimension from this joint to this joint is gonna be two meters, so let's define that. And then from this joint to this joint in horizontal distance should also be two meters. Now we'll note in this case it tells us that this is a driven dimension, meaning it is already defined based on other parts of this sketch that we have defined. So we're going to leave this alone. We can say either make this dimension driven, meaning it, we, we recognize it's calculated based on everything else, or just hit cancel. We don't have to worry about it. And now you can see that this is fully defined. That's, that's a good thing to see that show up in our SolidWorks sketches. So we can end Smart Dimension and exit our sketch, and it's time to create the weldments. We're going to use weldments, structural members, so go ahead and click on structural members. And it does not matter what we create these out of for this analysis. For, for analyses in the future where we're looking at stress and deformation, this will matter. But when we're just wanting to calculate the internal force, it doesn't matter. Now you'll notice that you can't select all the members all at once. We're going to have to do this in groups. And so we select the outer ones first. 
we want to come down and look at settings and make sure that this apply corner treatment is turned off. This is particularly important in 2016, but we might as well just leave it turned off in all of our SolidWorks versions that we're using for this truss analysis. Great feature for some other reasons, but for now we'll turn it off. Now we'll say new group. You'll see that those just turned to gray and now we can start selecting other members. You'll find that we're going to have to do this in a series of four groups. So I'm just clicking along and I'm clicking new group after each time that SolidWorks won't let me keep going. Click the green arrow and we're done. All right, so now we've got our model built. It's time to run our simulation. So we go to the simulations tab, click on this study advisor drop down and option new study. Name it whatever you want. We'll call this trust analysis. It's a static analysis, so we'll say OK. And a couple preliminaries that need to be done. First things first, we need to make sure that we have all of these defined as truss elements. You'll notice this little icon is an, looks like an eye-shaped an eye beam, and those are all beam elements, so we're going to select them all by holding the shift key and clicking from top to bottom, edit definition, and turn them all into truss elements. Click the green check mark saying OK, and you'll notice the icon just changed from an eye shape to an angled shape. Now we could edit the joint group, but at, at uh, looking at this truss, it looks like our purple joints are where we want them to be, so we won't mess with joint group. Let's go ahead and define fixtures. Look back at our truss. A is a pin, E is a roller, and because SolidWorks has a few built-in fixtures for us, we can use that for this pin at A. Immovable, no translation, just select the joint, see that it appears in this window, click OK. We'll need to create another geometry uh, restriction for this joint. Now it's a roller, so we're going to use the reference geometry to define how we're restraining it. We need to res uh, reference it to the front plane. We're going to restrain it from moving vertically, and also I'm going to click this one, which is normal to the plane. So SolidWorks is going to do a three-dimensional analysis, but we would like this to be a two-dimensional problem where it lives in its plane. And so we actually need to create a, one more geometry fixture using reference geometry again, and we need to select all of these other joints other than the two that we've already selected. We need to make sure that they're all included in this calc in this. Got them all. Let's count here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, we've got them all. We're going to reference to the front plane, and we want to restrain all of these only normal to the plane. And if we look at the back, we'll see little green arrows appearing that's telling us that we're restraining that truss to move only in that front plane. In other words, it's a two dimensional problem now. So click the green check mark and we're done. So we've got the members defined, we've got joints there, we've got fixtures applied. We now need to add these two six kilonewton loads. So we come down <coughs> here to external loads, right click, say force. We're going to define these define uh, loads at the joints. We're going to pick the two joints. Since it's the same magnitude of force, we can put it at both joints. We need a reference to a plane again. We're working in the SI units. And this is going to be in the vertical direction. Six kilonewtons or 6,000 newtons. You notice that the arrows are pointing up, so we need to reverse the direction and make those arrows point down and say OK. Now there's one last thing to do before we, before we run the analysis, and that's define a material. Doesn't seem like it should matter, but SolidWorks is a very deep program and so we need to define a material. It doesn't really matter for this analysis for the outputs that we're looking for, but it certainly will matter for some other analyses that we'll do later in the semester. So to do that, I should tell you what I did there. I just right-clicked on part five, in this case, for this model. But whatever your part is named, apply material to all bodies. And I just chose the default, which happens to be alloy steel. Click apply, click close. We've got the model built. It's time to mesh and run the analysis, so right-click on Mesh, click Mesh and Run. Give it a little bit of time while the analysis runs. 
meanwhile be thinking about which members we're wanting to compare to the solution. And there's the deformed shape, which is neat to look at, but not what we were asked to look at. What we need to know are what are the internal beam forces. Two ways to do it. We can look at the beam diagrams and look specifically for the axial force in newtons for all of the beams. Click OK. And we see this image appear. And now we've got to look out of the plane and we see that for some reason some of these um, drawings or these magnitudes of the internal force are shown out of the plane. But we can also see that we've got some zero force members here, 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 and here, and here, which should also jive with uh, what we had found in the solution. So that's neat, but that's not as useful as perhaps looking at a list of specific answers. And so if we right click on results and say list beam forces, we'll see that we can list the forces or stresses. We want forces in SI and we want all of them. So we'll go ahead and click the green check mark and up pops a table like so. Now this is confusing because I don't know what beam 1 is and beam 2, but if I click on them, you'll see that they're highlighted on your actual truss. So let's go back to this problem and see which ones we were asked to find. GF, JF, and JE. That's this one, GA, GF, JF, and JE. And if we look at our solution, we should see numbers like 9.38 for JE, which is this diagonal. 6 in tension for this vertical and 5.6 kilonewtons in tension for this horizontal. So let's look at our SOLIDWORKS model and see if that's what we get. In fact, the one I'm currently sitting on says beam 6, but you can see it's highlighted here, 5.6 or 5,625 newtons or 5.63 kilonewtons. Now let's briefly talk about sign convention. If we look at the this beam diagram here on the screen, we see that it's blue, which says it's negative, which in the convention we're used to would mean compression. In SOLIDWORKS, it's actually reversed. It means tension. Um, and if we look here in the list of forces, if we look at the number associated with the second end, so end two, that will have the sign convention that we're used to. Either way, whether you realize that tension is negative or blue, compression is positive or red on these beam diagrams, or just come out and pull out the value associated with end two of each of our beams. So we've got that one matching, 5.625. Let's look at these again. So 9.38 in that diagonal. So let's go back and find that diagonal. And maybe it's this one, which is also 9.38. And that's in compression, which is also in compression super. And let's find this JF, which is this tension member here. Should be 6,000. And lo and behold, we've got 6,000. At N2, it's positive, meaning it's in tension. Look at our solution. Sure enough, it's in tension. All right. So that is building a truss model using SOLIDWORKS. And in this particular case, we were able to check the analysis output because we had already done some hand calculations for this particular problem. And now, using this SOLIDWORKS model, we could analyze a variety of things, such as different load locations, slightly different geometries, and uh, we could find out all sorts of great and useful information. Well, I hope this video helped when it comes to creating these models in SOLIDWORKS using weldments which are built based on sketches, and then running simulations where we have defined our fixtures or our support conditions, our loads, and we have made sure that every member is defined as a truss element for a problem like this.